I think there are two main things that I'd like to highlight. The first is uh, what we're doing for our own processes and our own um, systems and production facilities uh, to pull out waste, reduce cost um, and, and optimize efficiency uh, in those processes. And there's nothing more important uh, in terms of impact for us than our production facilities uh, around digitalization in the first instance. So uh, we have an umbilical facility uh, in Moss and have undertaken a, a digital revamp on that facility. And what that's meant for us um, is that we've taken people away from the production line uh, immediately. So from a safety perspective that exposure has been reduced uh, which is you know, really key actually. And I think that's, that's one thing for digitalization. Actually it's an enabler to make our industry safer which is incredibly important. Um, so, so we've taken people out of the production line uh, and, and, and moved them uh, to a remote location where, where they're much safer. Um, secondly, we've improved our throughput by 30%. So we can do things 30% faster, which ultimately means uh, we can take on uh, more, more production. Uh, so that's a, effectively a 30% de-bottlenecking uh, of our process, which is significant. Uh, the third element there, and that's, uh, that ties up with the uh, efficiency, is on quality. Uh, we saw a 50% reduction uh, in quality issues coming out post-production. So automating the system has made our process more reliable and actually our output uh, of a higher quality. So that's a local example internally where we're seeing the value from digitalization uh, and the digital trans uh, transformation. For our customers, um, I think there's even a, a deeper value add uh, to be had there because again, it, it starts really early and uh, is at play throughout the duration of, uh, of an asset's life. Um, now, if I just explain very briefly the way that our system is set up, um, we have a broad base of data which uh, can be pulled from, from any location, whether that be the customer database, our own equipment as an original uh, equipment manufacturer, or the equipment of, um, of others. We're able to pull that data in, use it within our platform, and combine it with the Cognite data platform, uh, which really allows us to unlock the potential, some static data and dynamic data, and integrate that um, and let applications access that in the right way. So, so what we've done is you know, we've, we've liberated the data in that, um, in that database, but it's also uh, sort of uh, uh, anonymized in the right way uh, so that it's, it's secure. Um, if I just talk through a couple of the applications that we use uh, from that database, that would probably be helpful to articulating where some of the value uh, can be found. Uh, one of the areas uh, early on in a project where we see uh, value being added and have achieved that, I'll come on to a, a case of that, is um, in early phase work, uh, when you're doing concept development, sometimes there are a lot of unknowns, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty around costs as well of, uh, of various designs. And what we've come up with is a tool uh, using the, the extensive database we have uh, from, from our own as-built platforms and floaters in the past. Um, and that has been used to accelerate design uh, and explore options on a much more um, confident basis. There's confidence in the, the numbers, the estimates, the layouts, because it's based on designs that we know work uh, and that have best practice embedded within them. So inherently, they're probably a bit safer. Um, they're a bit more robust in terms of how they will work um, once they're installed, because we know they are working currently out in the field today. So we can, we can get to a confident level of design earlier and we can play with options around that uh, much quicker. 
So there's greater confidence in an optimized solution. Now I've mentioned top sides a few times. Uh, the reality is that we look at that system from an overall perspective. So that would include the realities of subsea, the realities of export, uh, and develop a, uh, a design that optimizes across the entire system, not just the top sides or subsea, um, and again, not just capex or opex, but in reality across the whole piece. So that's really powerful early on. So you get the right design early, and actually with our system, you get the confidence uh, around costs, around schedule, around buildability and installability uh, of that asset. So that's on the, on the front end side. Um, you know, moving on then to say uh, an asset in operations. Um, and this is where I, I guess a digital twin is, is really useful because while uh, what we develop in the concept stage We'll go on through uh, detailed design, we'll have all of the systems incorporated within it um, and, and a single source of data, um, so, so very little room for error uh, in terms of data quality. Uh, that continues on into operations and we're then able to build in the realities of operation. Uh, we have a system called QVI which is designed to allow for the most effective user interface. So it, it is used typically for asset integrity management, operations uh, understanding, operations performance, ultimately predictive maintenance, um, and remote operations as an enabler. So we have this tool that's a, a 3D model uh, that can be navigated very easily, um, and you can access uh, various parts of the plant, the high-risk areas, and go in and intervene um, when it's appropriate. You're not beholden to a, a failure uh, that you didn't see coming. There is a much higher uh, chance of seeing where failures will be coming if you're fully digitally enabled. And that's where we see the digital twin uh, coming into its own and being really valuable. And then finally, I suppose, uh, as an original equipment manufacturer, uh, within particularly the subsea systems. Uh, we have uh, pumps, we have compression units, we have subsea control systems that have huge amounts of data uh, coming back to not only the operators but to ourselves as well. Now we see that across the entire fleet of, uh, of infrastructure and can benchmark. Uh, we know when the health is, is deteriorating of that specific unit um, and can use data from, from the entire fleet uh, to make sure that repairs and interventions are done uh, in, in a positive uh, way so that no unplanned shutdowns need to be had, uh, but rather we can approach any intervention in a much more proactive manner. So those are three examples of, uh, of where we see digitalization having a big impact. Um, I think the, the, the ultimate goal is, is having not only those things working in isolation, but you know, really building on uh, the system as a whole. Uh, as the technology develops, as our systems develop, uh, and as the oil and gas industry integrates uh, more fully with the technology and digital industry, I think we'll really begin to see um, unlocking of, uh, of the industry and a true transformation that really uh, we as an industry need to see.